Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life the Mundane and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to get out all that energy that I know your kids have pent up, but when you're stuck inside, whether that's because of a quarantine or because of social distancing or just because of rain, snow, whatever weather conditions are. If you are stuck inside and need your kids to get out a little bit of energy, we're going to talk about ways you can do that that are easy, that are cheap, and things that you already have on hand. So let's get started. So the first way that I want to show you guys is by using these awesome cards. I got these um, and I will link the link below on where you can pick them up as well. But you can also just make your own version of this if you want to. But essentially what it is, is you have your letter cards and you have your activity cards. They have different exercises listed on them. And what the advantage of getting the bot ones are is that they have a description on one side and pictures and step-by-step -step instructions on the other side. But you could definitely do this by making note cards of your letters and note cards of just different different exercises that your kids already know, push-ups, pull-ups, um, sit-ups, those kinds of things, right? The idea here is that you're then going to lay out in whatever amount of space you have. Here you can see I didn't do it in a huge area and laid out cards for the letter with an activity card sandwiched underneath. Then each kid is going to go fight a card. It can be randomized that they just go pick a random letter and see what activity is under that card. Or if you have more space in our, um, when we do this in our family room, I can lay out all 26 letters all throughout the family room and they will go and find the first letter of their, of their name. Okay. So they're going to go to that first letter. They're going to flip over that activity card. They're going to do that activity. If it says do five push ups or 10 jumping jacks or whatever, they're going to do that activity and then they're going to flip it back over and move to the next letter in their name. This is a great way to work on spelling or or sight words that you're trying to um, get your kids to really put into practice, have them go through and spell it and do the different exercises with each letter. But it can also be short and it can just be doing one or two exercises out there. Um, so that is something to keep in mind for sure. Another thing is to use things around your house to do heavy lifting, heavy work. This is great for when your kids are getting frustrated, um, maybe getting angry about doing a particular subject, not feeling particularly cooperative. And no, it's not a sense of punishment. It's actually good for them, right? They need some way to work out that energy, to work out that frustration. And this is the way we're going to have them do it. You can use anything from books. You can, if you have weights, you can use them. I like to use um, two liter bottles. I, after we've drank them, um, I will fill them up with water or rice or sand or whatever it would be. The big thing I would just tell you is to make sure you are thinking about the age and the ability of the child. Don't have your two-year-old lifting what you would have your 12-year-old lifting, obviously for safety purposes. But the idea here is to give something with a little bit of weight to it and to have them take it from one side of the house to the other. Now this might be in an obstacle course for an older child and having them go under the table and around um, you know, the island in the kitchen and then climb down the stairs and take it to one dropping spot and see how many they can do how fast um, and time them on it. Or it can be something when it's little or kids as simple as run it from this side of the house to this side of the house. Take it from mommy to daddy. That's really all it takes. It will help. You will notice their whole demeanor change quite a bit with this. And you can do it, like I said, with things you already have around the house. Tip number three is to work out using all the amazing resources on YouTube. I know there are a lot of free resources coming out through the YMCA. I know Beachbody is offering kids workouts during this time of quarantine um, for our country. But even if it's not during those times where you want a resource that's always going to be available for free, I really recommend Cosmic Kids Yoga. We have used it for years. My kids love it. My two-year-old can do it. My one-year-old tries, but my two-year-old can do it all the way up to my 10-year-old, um, almost 11-year-old. They enjoy the stories that go along with it. Instead of it being a workout program, it is a story that they're doing exercises with without even really knowing. So they're going to open the door and reach over the hand, over their head, and then they're going to close the door and put it back down, right? They're going to make a phone call in the story and ask for help, and they're going to do that by putting their foot up by their ear, which I would demonstrate for you, but I obviously do not have the flexibility to do so. Um, but they're going to do those things as this, as the leader who's leading it is telling the story. And so my kids are super engaged and always excited to get in and do some Cosmic Kids Yoga. They have episodes all for free on YouTube and they have some that are as short as like 10 minutes and some as long as about 30 minutes. You can find them with licensed characters like Star Wars and Frozen and stories like that or more generic of just a jungle story or a story about dogs 
or whatever. So I really, really recommend checking out that resource. Go Noodle is another one I've heard great things about. I have only tried them a couple of times, but they have some shorter ones. So if you're looking for shorter brain breaks, that's another great idea. Tip number four is along the same lines of the idea of a brain break is to really take opportunities when your kids need a little bit of mixing things up, right? Maybe they are having trouble getting a concept or maybe there is a, a lack of desire to keep going and you need to kind of motivate them. Use little moments, little pockets of movement to help encourage that excitement and to keep going, right? So one way we do this is if we are reading through a long fluency sheet of words that they have to read and they're getting really bogged down, I'll say, okay, now once you get to this line, once you get to this point, now we're going to turn on a song on Alexa and you guys can just have kind of a dance break. And they love that. They eat that up. Also doing things like if your kids are doing spelling words or memory work or even listening to history or things like that, have them jump on a trampoline while they're doing it or do jumping jacks. Any of those body brain movements that you can kind of cross over will help make stronger connections in their mind about the material you're giving them and it'll help keep the wiggles out. Tip number five is don't be afraid to use other spaces in your house. Get creative. If you're having trouble finding room in your house, maybe try moving the cars out of the garage. If you truly can't be outside, move the cars out of the garage and let them have that area to run around. Mix things up. Don't be afraid to slide some furniture over to give the kids some room. You don't have to have a large amount of room for kids to get their wiggles out, but it's always more fun and exciting when you change up the scenery for your kiddos. We love to do this in our garage and we love to make obstacle courses. You can have your kids kids to use painter's tape on the floor or chalk on the floor if you're in the garage and have them draw different challenges, right? So maybe there's a straight line on the floor and for that one, you're supposed to jump across it. And then when you get to the circle, you need to do four squats. And then when you go down the zigzag, you're going to try, you're going to run that zigzag to do this, right? And then when you get to the triangle, that means that you're going to do a burpee or whatever it is, okay? These are different ways that you can get them moving. The sixth tip, is to have your kids do, um, you know, if you guys have video games like the Wii, to do something like that. But if you don't have video game systems and you're looking for the poor man's way or the non-video game way to go about getting similar results and getting your kids excited, is to actually just use YouTube to look up different um, games and resources that they have on the Wii. So one that we love to use is Just Dance Kids, we type that into YouTube and it pulls up a whole plethora of videos that are straight from, it's like screenshots from a Wii, okay? They pick the song. You can pick which song you want. Here you can see my kids doing one. They give them all the actions and the hand motions and the dancing and everything. And my kids go along right along with it and they don't even realize that it was actually created for a Wii that you're supposed to have a remote in your hand. So it's supposed to score you. They just go along with the dance music and they love having um, actual dance moves to go along with that. These are obviously just a few ideas. And I want to say too, that being outside is always best guys. This is always what we're shooting for is getting that vitamin D, getting out in the fresh air. It's healthier. It's so much better for your kids to be able to be outside, but there are times when that's just not possible. So I really wanted to share with you guys those things that you could do inside. I would love to hear what you guys love to do inside to get your physical movement in and to help your school days run smoother. And be sure to like and subscribe to my channel because we're going to have even more videos coming up. Then soon I'm going to be having a video coming out about out, how to um, really get the most out of your sight word practice or your reading words. Um, we use all about reading and I know it can sometimes be hard to get through all the flashcards that we need to get through. So we're going to work on some really, really, really specific strategies that you can use to help ingrain those words into their head to help them have fun while they're learning with things again that you have around your house. So we'll see you guys next time. Bye.